today on Jesus is the open door. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, I believe that this message is going to strengthen and encourage and help, help you to understand more how to witness, how to encourage, and how to help. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask you, Father, Lord, for you to have your way the remainder of this service. Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, for your outpouring of your spirit and what we have felt here today in the rejoicing. God, oh God, oh God, Lord, you see what we need in the hour that we needed. And Lord, I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, for touching each one of us. Holy Lamb, Holy Lamb, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to touch, God, and let your conviction fall, Lord. Lord, across this area, Lord. Lord, and draw by your Spirit, God. And Lord, bring the ones in that you desire to be here, Father. And Lord Jesus, I'm asking you, God, to move for the young people. Lord, here across this part here, God. And Lord Jesus, them that are caught up in drugs and alcohol, Lord, I'm asking you, God, to move for them and deliver them. And God, the ones that are caught up in gangs, Lord, I'm asking you, Jesus, to set them free. And Lord, all ages, Father, here in this area, God, I'm asking you to go to in each home. Lord, and work that work, Jesus, that you desire to work in each and every heart. And Lord Jesus, and help them, Lord, and move for their needs, Lord, in your precious holy name, Jesus. Father, have your way. God, anoint me, Lord, in this service. God, to preach your word. Because, Lord, I cannot do it in myself. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, it is by your anointing, God, and I'm asking you to refresh my anointing today. And God, open the door of utterance, Jesus, by the unction of the Holy Ghost. And God, deliver what you would have to deliver here today, God. Because, Lord, it is by your Spirit, Lord, these things are done. And by your Word and through thy Word, Father. Lord, plant it in our heart, Father, rooted and grounded. Lord, that it will grow and sprout up, Father, and flourish, Jesus. Holy Lamb, Holy Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Holy and righteous Savior. Lord, in your name, Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. I tell you what, ain't nothing like our Lord, is it? Hallelujah. He is Lord and Christ of us all. My goodness, my goodness. Hallelujah. But I'm going to start reading at chapter 10 and verse 1 of St. John. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, he is the same, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And he put, when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. I want you to really take notice of this. He goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. That's the reason I tell people, when you hear someone is bringing forth false doctrine, don't just walk away, but run. Hallelujah. Flee away from that thing. Because we are his children, and the only thing we hear is his voice, and that's the only thing that will lead us. And as long as we hear his voice, I want you to see what he said right there. He would go before us, and we would follow him. You know, I read in another scripture over in the prophets, and when the Lord brought it to my remembrance, and when he gave me the vision here for this place, and he told me, he said, I've sent an angel out before you. And he said, he'll go before you and prepare the way, and he has. Just think what it would have been if he hadn't been there. Hallelujah. I tell you what, God has kept a lot of things drove back from here. I mean, look at the threats we've had. Look at the, the vandalism we've had and all the things that have come up against us. But God had kept and stayed the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I love him. I praise him. And I tell you what, there was another thing that touched my heart and really kind of 
struck some fear in my heart. The fear of God. I'm not talking about the fear of man, but I'm talking about the fear of God. <laughs> he said, that angel that he sends out before you, said, do not try him. At least he turned and ran you. Hallelujah. I said, God, don't ever let me do that because I sure don't want the angel to turn and ran and have his wrath upon me. Hallelujah. Whoo, hallelujah. It's the reason I try my best to walk as softly as I can before the Lord. You know, to be swift to hear and slow to speak and be able to reach out and feel God and, and, and hear the Word of God. But I want us to go on, and I want you to understand that it's very important that you let God tune your ears to hear only Him. Because there are many deceiving spirits out today. I mean, they're out by the droves. There are wolves in sheep clothing everywhere you turn, having every damnable doctrine that you could ever imagine. But I tell you what, when we hear it, it has that uncertain sound. <laughs> Hallelujah. It don't ring true to us. We said, no, we're not having nothing to do with that. You know why? Because we love the Lord. And because He is the door. He is the only way in. Hallelujah. To the Father. He said, no man can come to the Father except He come through me. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life that men should live. Hallelujah. I tell you what, there's many people running around saying they got truth. But if it don't line up with this Word, they don't have truth. Because there's two spirits. There's one of truth and one of error. And we are walking in one of them. And I said, Lord, always help me to walk in the spirit of truth. Because it's the spirit of truth that will set you free. Nothing else will do it. Nothing. But the spirit of truth will set you at liberty. And wherever Jesus Christ is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. I praise him. And I love him. I tell you what, I love walking in this. I know it's just a building. I know it's just a building. It's just a assembly place that we gather to meet God. Ooh, but I tell you what, he never fails to meet us here. Hallelujah. You know why? Because we bring him in with us. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I tell you what, God has been really good to us. Yes, he has. And I tell you what, he's got great things in store for us this year. And I don't want to miss a part of it. And I tell you what, the church is going to be having the tent going up quite a bit this coming year. And I've been praying about putting it up down there by that tower. And have an account meet. Hallelujah. Having different ministers to come in and preach. Have a morning service at 10 and then a service in the evening at 7 o'clock. I've been wanting to have a count meet ever since I've been here. <laughs> hadn't had the means to do it. and hadn't. But I said, Lord, a tent would be the perfect thing. Hallelujah. I tell you what, God knows what to do. And he'll put the things that you need in your hands. Yes, he will. But I want to go on. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. And then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. Wouldn't that be awful? Every time you went to your door, that there wasn't nothing but thieves and robbers there. You get tired of opening that door, wouldn't you? In fact, you would just refuse to. I'm not opening that door no more. Hallelujah. But the Lord said, there ain't nothing come before my door but thieves and robbers. Hallelujah. But one thing about it, when the Lord opens the door, no man can shut it. And when he uh, shuts it, no man can open it. Hallelujah. But it goes on, he says, I am the door by me. If any man enter in... He shall be saved and shall go on in and out and find pasture. That means you're going to find feeding ground. The Lord is raising up shepherds, hallelujah, and leaders across this land, true shepherds, hallelujah, that will stand between the devil and the sheep, hallelujah, and rebuke them of our authority of the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you what, they're laying down their lives. Picking up the cross and falling after him. They're not hirelings that flee at every little old thing. Hallelujah. A hireling will flee when it, get the tough, when, it the, when it gets rough and the going gets tough. They will flee every time and leave the sheep scattered about. But I said, Lord, I fear God. I said, Lord, no matter how rough it's got here, 
Not one out of a time have I ever had in my spirit to leave this place without His permission. Not one out of a time. Not one out of iota of a time have I done that. I said, Lord, just give me the strength to stand. And the ones that you put with me, put the strength in them to stand, God. Because we can't do it outside of you. But, Lord Jesus, Father, if we'll be faithful, Father, in the few, Lord, we'll be faithful in the much. And I tell you what, God is going to do exactly what He's going to do. Oh, I love Him. Woo, but I tell you what, that just... Oh, when I was reading that this morning and studying, I said, my goodness. You know, you can read a chapter over and over and over, but there'll be times that just verses leap out at you, boy, and just grab you by the heart. You say, whoop, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Father. I tell you, there's joy in this word. It'll strengthen you and encourage you. You get down and out in this courage, you get that Bible open, you start reading. There's many times I'll go to Psalms 91 and Psalms 23. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, those verses just start just laying out for me, and I can just see a picture of it in my head. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, it refreshes my soul, and it'll do the same thing to you. Because I tell you what, the dead letter is dead. But when the Spirit and the Word comes together, conception is formed. And then it bursts forth faith. Uh, hallelujah. When you read this Word uh, and you let the Spirit of God move in you and stir in you, you'll feel that faith stand up in your heart. I tell you what, the Lord is increasing our faith. We've been praying for it and praying, Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. You know, the disciples said one day, Lord, increase our faith. Hallelujah. And the Lord wants us to ask for these things. And we need it. Because I tell you what, there's, I've never seen the church in such a physical condition that I've seen it in. But I tell you what, that's going to change. Whew. Hallelujah. Because I tell you what, the Spirit of God, He's just grabbed a hold in that measure of faith that He has put down in our heart. And He's just stirring it up real good. Hallelujah. And he said, now take a hold of it and act up on it. Hallelujah. And it's going to produce in your life. When you put something to action, it produces. And that's what God's wanting us to do. But I want to go on. It says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. See, that's what's happened too much in the past. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and cares not for the sheep. All he's worried about is himself, whether it's male or female. Hallelujah, they're worried about their self, how much money they can get for their selves, how much they can do for their own selves. But I tell you what, God is raising up men and women all across this land. They're not trying to heap up on their self. They are trying to get somewhere with God and get something from God to give His sheep, hallelujah, that they can be nourished and grow up in Him. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel God. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and I am known of mine. Oh, I tell you what, isn't that something? I am known of mine. That means that your spirit is bearing witness with his spirit, that you are his child. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? And our spirit bears witness with one another that we are his children. Hallelujah. I tell you what, that old slew foot, the devil, he tries to bring in a, and be sly and conniving. But I tell you what, ain't nothing like the spirit of God. It will not let you be deceived. If you'll be willing and obedient. Hallelujah. And it goes on, it says, and, an, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold. You know what he's talking about right there? This is before the Gentile age come in. He was telling the Jews right there. He says, I have a sheep of another fold. He was talking about the Gentile. Hallelujah. And over there in Isaiah, it talks about the Gentiles running unto him. And that's exactly what has happened. Hallelujah, when his refreshing water has sprung up. Hallelujah. And it brings life. And the Gentiles have run unto Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, there is a time and a place that there's going to be a great awakening among the Jewish people as well. 
I believe it's already started. And I tell you what, when that Gentile door closes, whew, Lord, help us all. Help every one of us not to be in our, in our flesh at that time. I'm not saying you'll be lost. But the Bible tells us that we're going to be judged by every idle word. Every idle word. So whatever's going forth at that time when that door is shut, you're going to fall and you're going to lay as what you're producing. That's the reason it's so important for us to learn to keep our spirit. That's the reason the Lord, when He spoke to me in 2005, He said, My daughter, first bring under subjection every thought unto me. He said, then, And after I worked on that for a little while, every day, every day, I mean repeatedly, all throughout the day, I made sure every thought that come to my mind that it was of the Lord. Hallelujah. Whether, and when, you know, there's three spirits that talk to you. That is God, flesh, and the devil. Two of them you need to cause to flee. Listen to one of them, and that's God. And if you'll do that, God will grow you and mature you up in His Spirit. And the Lord told me after that, He said, Now I want you to work on your spirit, about keeping your spirit. He said, A man that cannot keep his spirit is like a city without walls. He said, But a man that can keep his spirit is set as a defense city. And He said, I will make you a defense city. And I tell you what, I started working on that every day. Hallelujah, without fail. I mean, every day I worked on it. And believe me, the devil has tried me repeatedly for, to cause me to lose my spirit. But God, by His merciful hand, He has helped me to keep it. And one reason is because I will not allow myself to be pulled up in all this flesh, man. I won't do it. If I was to, then I would start losing control of my spirit. I'm not going to do it. I treasure what God has put in this earthen vessel. And we got to start treasuring Him. Hallelujah. And keep everything at bay that's not bringing glory to Him. See, it's a time for the church to rise up and glorify the Master. And the Bible says that we bring glory to the Father by what? Producing much fruit unto Him. And that's what we're called unto good works. We're not saved by good works, but we're called unto good works. Hallelujah. I tell you what, God is so good and merciful. Thank goodness He has been, because I tell you what. Whew. And I'll say this again. He would be just and righteous right now if he just disintegrated the whole earth because of what mankind has put him through. But isn't he merciful and loving that he loves his creation so much that he has just been long-suffering and long-suffering and long-suffering. Oh, goodness. My goodness, that's the Lord. Thank goodness man hadn't got rule and reign over this earth as they did. I'm talking about over what God does. Because they did, we've been gone a long time ago. Because <laughs> men's quick, Lord, <laughs> to bring that justice, Lord, swift justice. Whew. But I tell you what, God is kind and merciful to us. And I want to read on a little bit more, and then I'm going to share some other scriptures. But this is so good. I said, Lord, my goodness, Father, you are that dark. And no man can enter into the kingdom unless they come through you first. And there is so many kinds of doctrines out there today. There's one going on now that is just prevalent. And it has taken the church world by a storm. And that's one God and three faiths. That is against the Word of God. The Bible says there's one faith. One God, one faith. They're trying to bring the Islam together, the Christian and the Jews, saying that we all serve the same God. And that's what we have in common, so we need to agree with one another. That is a lie of the devil. And I tell you what, if you, jump, you fall into that mess, it'll damn your soul. It's a lie of the pits of hell. There is only one God and one faith and one baptism. And the Lord is trying to unify His body and bring us into that. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, the cry is going forth like it never has. Come out of her, my people, and be not but take of her sins. The Bible says if we were take of her sins... We'll partake of the cup of wrath when God pours it out. I don't want to have nothing to do with that old holy church. Nothing. I don't have no idols before me whatsoever. And I tell you what, anything that has to do with idols, I shun it. I flee from it. Because I love my Lord that much. Hallelujah. And it goes on and it says, Therefore doeth my Father love me. Now let me skip back up. Verse 15, As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. 
and other sheep I have which are not of this fold them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd and when the Lord broke down that middle wall of partition between the Jew and the Gentile hallelujah he brought us into one fold and he's one shepherd of all of us hallelujah aren't you thankful that he reached out and made salvation possible for the Gentile people oh I'm so thankful you just think about it we would be lost if it hadn't done that oh dear Lord there was only a few that were able to enter in under the grace of God by what they'd done for the Jews back in the Old Testament but grace was given unto us all under the new covenant thank God for the new covenant hallelujah therefore do my father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it again no man taketh it from me but I lay it down of myself and I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again hallelujah this commandment have I received of my father and there's one thing about Jesus Christ there was only one thing on his mind and that was to do the will of the father the Bible tells us them that do the will of the Father shall enter in. Shall enter in. That's the reason it's so important for us each, and I've said it many times before, to find our own garden of Gethsemane and pray our way through that we can release our will unto God and do His will. It's not an easy thing to do. But the Lord will help us to do it if we would just surrender unto Him. And that's what I'm trying to do every day and learn to do. And that's what God is wanting all His children to do. And we have to do this thing daily. We can't just pick it up when we want to and lay it down when we want to. We have to be faithful in it. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in Proverbs 8 and 34, Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gate, waiting at the post of my doors. Isn't that something? Hallelujah. He said, Blessed is that man. You know, the Bible says, Hallelujah. You know, that he hears the fervent prayer of a righteous man it availeth much hallelujah but the Bible says I left out one word it says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man so that means when we are praying and pouring out our heart to God let it be effective in other words when we get down make sure there's no out in our heart against anyone because if you get down there before him and you have an out in your heart he will not hear us See, every time I get before the Lord, I empty my heart out. The Lord purges so heart, Lord. Cleanse it, Lord. If there's anything in there hidden from me, Father, show it to me that I can get it right. Lord, if there's any odd against my brother in me, Lord, Father, cleanse it from me, Lord. I don't want anything to hinder this prayer from touching your doorpost. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, if you make sure that you're clean before you would go to the Father, oh, I tell you what, he will help you and he will keep you. He will help you through all these things. But he said, blessed is the man that heareth me and watching daily at my gate, waiting at the post of my doors. Proverbs 15, 31, the ear that heareth the reproof of life about us among the wise. You know, it's a wise thing to hear reproof and act upon it because his word is for correction and reproof. It's for encouragement to build but only the Lord can build this thing. If any man tries to build it in himself, he buildeth in vain. Only God can build this thing. Only God. I want to read just a little bit more in this chapter 10 before I go on into that. And it goes on. It says, There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a devil and is mad. Why hear you him? And others said, These are not the words of him that hath a devil. Can a devil open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication. And it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews around about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Isn't that what a lot of people are saying today? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. When that's all he ever does is try to tell us and tell us and tell us. But until we can get past this old carnal fleshly mind, we ain't going to be able to hear nothing but carnality. That's it. But it goes on and it says, And Jesus answered them, I told you 
See, he said, I have told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. See, the Lord will approve your ministry. He will approve your walk in Him. And signs and wonders will follow after you. Hallelujah. We don't pray for it to... You know, we pray to see people delivered and set free. But we don't necessarily just pray for signs and wonders to follow after. If we seek the kingdom of God in the correct way, all those things are automatically follow. Because he said to seek me, seek my kingdom and all my righteousness, and then all these other things will be added unto you. So the Lord is wanting us to seek him in the right way, in the right manner. And if we'll do that, it will produce much faith in our lives. Hallelujah. And that goes on and it says, But you believe not, because you are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. And there are many that are not God's sheep. And no matter how much you try to save them, it ain't going to work. That's the reason Jesus said, No man can come unto me except my Father draw him. And that's the reason I don't believe in that mass-producing conversion. When they have people to stand up and just re repeat a prayer after them. Because it takes the conviction power of God to fall in their heart and draw that heart to Him before He can deal with that heart. And then when He deals with that heart and godly sorrow truly takes a hold of that heart and then they fall before Him in repentant humbleness unto Him, then He receives them. Hallelujah! And they accept Him in their heart by faith. Thank you, Jesus. But just getting anybody to repeat a prayer and say, now you're saved. Go on. Hallelujah. That's the reason you got so many out there drinking and conniving and, and bickering and cussing and carrying on and saying they're Christians when they're not. They're deceived. And who's deceived them? These old wolves in sheep clothing. Said the blind will lead the blind and they both will fall in the ditch. They're both going to have the same end result. But I said, Lord, let me, Father... Help me and send me to the reachable, Father. Lord, help me not to waste time on them that do not want you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because I tell you what, if you don't watch it, the devil will get you just set up on somebody that you're determined to see them saved. When God hadn't even dealt with them, <laughs> we have to start praying. God, deal with that heart. God, Jesus, talk to them while they're asleep. Talk to them while they're awake. Lord, talk to them while they're under drugs. Talk to them while they're under alcohol. Lord, talk to them. Don't let them get away from your Father. That's the way I've been praying. I said, Lord, don't let them, every time they try to flee. <laughs> you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that he fled one way and there was a snake. He fled another and there was a bear. Hallelujah. That's what I'm praying. God, get after them, Lord. Convict their heart, Father. Cause that conversion to take place. If that conversion takes place, then they'll walk forth in the Spirit of God. And you'll see Christ produced in them. Hallelujah. Lord, don't let them get away. <laughs> Whew, that's a good way to seek the Lord after somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you what, God is so good. I rejoice in Him. He is wonderful. And gave unto them eternal life. I want to read that 27 again. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father has gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stone, stones again to stone him, and Jesus answered, Many good works have I done. Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blessing him, because that thou being a man makest thyself God. And Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, You are gods. If you call them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world. Thou blasphemest, because I said I am the Son of God. Hallelujah. They could not see past their carnal way of thinking and their traditions of men. Hallelujah. Their eyes were blinded. Their ears were shut up where they could not hear and receive. 
only a small portion of the Jews were able to hear and receive that day. But it had to be so, so that we could be grafted in. And the Lord is not going to forget His people. Hallelujah. I tell you, we're all His people. In one spirit, Jew and Gentile alike. Because in Him there is neither male or female, Jew or bond. I mean, free or bond, male or female, Jew or Greek. We are one in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That's called in the Spirit of God. He says, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you believe not me, believe the works, that you may know and believe the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hands. I'm telling you one thing about it. Until God is through with you, I don't care where he sends you. They will not be able to do you in. They will not be able to destroy you in your flesh. Hallelujah. And when God's through with me, then Lord, just take me on home. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, my heart burdens for the lost here. But I tell you what, you can walk through so much suffering sometimes. You say, Lord, just take me on out of here. Lord, I'm tired of it. Lord, you keep sending me to a stiff-necked, hard-hearted people. They will not hear your word. But I tell you what, this fire, it burns in my bones. And I tell you what, and I said, Lord, I'll go anyhow. I tell you, it takes a lot of praying through. One thing about it, it has really caused me to fall on me. You know, I'm a prayer warrior anyway. I've been called as a prayer warrior. But I tell you what, it has sent me to my knees extra, a lot extra. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, God does, he'll use these things to, to mold us and make us and produce himself in us. And you know yourself, the trials and the tribulations that you have walked through. You have cried out in your heart to him. You have turned to him. That's what has brought you through. That is what has brought you through. And you're still standing here today with a sound mind to serve Jesus Christ. And that's not, oh, he's wonderful. I love him. I'm going to try not to hold us too much longer. But I want this word to get in you. Hallelujah. And, and if you want to write these scriptures down quickly, you can. It says, Ecclesiastes 5 and 1, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Now, the Lord is not saying that he's not wanting us to be obedient to him when we come into the house of God. What he's saying, he's wanting us to walk in wisdom. To walk in wisdom. I've heard people get up and just, you know, glorify the devil for 30 minutes. Well, that's a sacrifice of fools. The Lord don't want us to do that. He wants us to give honor and praise unto him. If you tell what the devil has done against you, tell how God is bringing you out. Say, I'm standing by the mercies of the Lord. <laughs> and Satan is defeated. Because he's wanting us to teach us how to walk in him. And how can we be taught unless these things are brought out to us? And when they're brought out to us, then we can take a hold of it and put it in action in our life. That's every one of us. Hallelujah. When I'm preaching, I tell you what, there might be one po finger pointed out, but there's three fingers and one thumb coming back at me. Hallelujah. We are preaching unto ourselves as well. We all have got to live this word. We have all got to make sure that our hearts are pure before him because only the pure in heart are going to see God. So that means that we need to walk daily in him. Walk daily. This is a daily walk. Luke 8 and 15. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart. Hearing, having heard the word, keep it and bring it forth fruit with patience. You know, the Bible says in our patience what? We possess our souls. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, it's took a lot of patience to walk through some of this stuff that we have endured. It's took a lot of patience. But thank God he has. And it's bringing forth temperance in our life. It's bringing forth things in us that the Lord is trying to produce good in us. And if we'll hear His Word and apply it to our heart, it'll birth forth in us. See, this is a birthing thing. Hallelujah. It has to be birthed from within out. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you what, I love Him. That's the reason He said you had to be born again. In other words, He said you've got to be birthed into my kingdom. If you're not birthed into my kingdom, you're not of my kingdom. You've got to be born of the water and the Spirit. 
Ain't got time to go into all that, but we have heard it before. Hallelujah. It's in James 1 and 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. I tell you what, so many have been quick to wrath, quick to speak, and very slow to hear. But the Lord is wanting us to do different. Don't do that. Be slow to wrath, slow to speak, and swift to hear. I want to read that one more time. James 1, 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. We need to ponder before we speak. We need to understand what we're saying. Because I tell you what, when words go out, it's hard to retract it. And it does a lot of damage. Psalms 24 and 3. It's the reason I bear so long with all this mess. And I said, Lord, I'm tired of it. I want it stopped. And I want it stopped. And I mean it. I want it stopped. But there is part of me still praying for mercy. Hallelujah. Because it breaks my heart. I can't understand it. Hallelujah. But we got to start praying according to the will of God. If we want to see God move. I said, Lord, if, if, if I've hindered things by not praying by your will, Lord, forgive me. But Lord, I don't want to see any to perish. And I know he does it for sure. It breaks my heart. But when people won't get their heart and their spirit right, then you just have to obey God. Hallelujah. Oh, dear Lord, I tell you. In Psalms 24 and 3, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? In the very next verse, it says, He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul, Unto vanity. What is vanity? It's excessive pride in oneself or one's appearance. A lack of real value, worthless or pointless. The Lord is not telling us not to take care of ourselves. But you can let it go too far. If it gets excessive, and you, you're just letting it be more in your life than anything else, then it starts becoming vanity in your life. The Lord don't want us to have vanity in our life because I'm telling you, children of God, all these things that you see here on this earth, they are temporal. They are here today and gone tomorrow. We need to get our eyes and our heart set in the treasures of heaven, in that eternal glory, because that's what's going to be everlasting, everlasting. And that's the reason it's so important that when we go before the Lord that we make sure that our hands are clean and that we make sure our hearts are pure. That's every one of us. And I don't care how much you grow in your ministry. You need to make sure that your heart stays pure. Be diligent. I preached a message here on diligently keep thy soul. Diligently means carefully, carefully watch out after your soul. You know, you have a treasure that's putting, putting down into your earthen vessel and God is wanting you to take care of it and treasure it. And don't let no one steal your crown. The Bible said, take heed that no man steal your crown. There's many out there trying to steal your crown. Trying to destroy you by the word of their mouth. But I tell you what, God is standing up for us. Isaiah 26 and 2, open ye the gates that the righteous nation, which keepeth the truth may enter in. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. God is raising up his nation, his people. His children of Israel. Oh, yes, he is. And he's opening that gate. And I tell you what, when God opens it, hallelujah, no man can shut that door. And I tell you what, no man can curse what God has blessed, and no man can bless what God has cursed. People's got to start understanding it's not what we like and what we want. It's what God Almighty wants. He said his ways and his thoughts are so much higher than ours. And we'll learn that we get rid of this old mind and let this mind in Christ Jesus be in us. Let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. What was that mind is to do the will of the Father. Get rid of our old stinking will and start doing after His will. Romans 5 and 2. And I tell you what, there's so many ministers that's so caught up in flesh. It grieves my soul. Playing all kind of old games and mess. It, it, it just grieves my soul. I said, Lord, help us, Father, to be a light. Lord, help us to be a light to this generation. Hallelujah. 
My goodness, Lord, if I'm doing anything, Father, show it to me. Lord, I don't want to be guilty of not being a light to your people, Lord, or to the world. Holy Lamb, Holy Lamb. It breaks my heart. Romans 5 and 2, by whom also we have access by faith into His grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope. Hallelujah, the glory of God. We stand in grace, people. It's not by works that any man should boast, but with the just shall live by faith. It is by faith. And I tell you what, if we put on His righteousness, not our old stinking righteousness. Our old righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. And it stinks in His nostrils. But I tell you what, if we'll be clothed in His righteousness. You know how you are clothed in His righteousness? By being a doer of His Word. The Bible says if you are a hearer only. Now I want you to hear this. If you are a hearer only, you deceive your own self. The Bible tells us not to be a hearer only, but to be a doer of the Word by putting it in action in our life. I don't want to deceive myself. And I tell you what, this flesh will deceive you if you let it. You get to pet yourself. Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> oh, you've been through so much. <laughs> oh, God. You know, you can rest for a few days. You don't have to pray. You don't have to read the Bible. Oh, you poor thing. Lord, don't listen to that. And I, believe me, our flesh, every one of us has talked to us like that. Every one of us. See, when my old flesh comes at me like that, I say, you get behind me. And I'll dig in even deeper. He did to talk to me like that. Hallelujah. Time we start taking authority against this stuff. T. Paul knew the importance of putting that flesh man, getting it under subjection to God. People need to read the Romans 8 and get full understanding of it. This flesh cannot come subject to the Spirit of God, and neither indeed can be. It tells you plainly right there in Romans 8. And we have got to understand, we have got to kill out this flesh, man, mortify the deeds of the flesh, that we can come subject to God by what? The Spirit. Them that are Spirit-led, they are the sons of God. I tell you what, God's raising up an army. Oh, yes, He is. I'm a, Lord, help me to be a part of it. Father, help me be a part of it. Help every one of your children to be a part of that army. Father, don't let a one. And he said he would. He wouldn't let a one be plucked out of his head. It don't mean that we won't be sidetracked sometimes when we let our flesh get the best of us. But I tell you what, he'll woo that heart and he'll deal with it. Hallelujah. Until he finally gets you back on the right path. <laughs> Lord, help me not to do that again. Because I tell you what, if you suffer enough by being on the wrong path, I tell you, you're willing to take heed and listen. Say, Lord, help me, Father. Help me, Jesus. Never to do that again. Hallelujah. It's just like a child. Sometimes they might get away from you and run out in front of a car or something. They just happen to be able to get away from that thing in time. It scares them enough to say, Whew, I'm not going to do that again. You know, I'm going to listen to Mama. I'm going to listen to Daddy. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Well, you know, that's what God's wanting us to do, to have wisdom and understand not to head headlong into things when He's telling you to wake up. What He's wanting us to do, wake up. Father, help me to wake up, Father. Lord, shake me if you have to. And He is. He's been giving us all a good shaking, and we needed it. And now He's telling us to strengthen that that remains. Strengthen that, because I've left the good part. Now strengthen that good part and build on it. Build on it by my Word. And I tell you what, it's God that builds us. If we'll let Him. He's not going to force us to do anything, but we have to let Him. We have to yield ourselves to Him. And it goes on, it says, Ephesians 2 and 18, For through Him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Ephesians 3 and 12, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of Him. I preached a word here one time, Hold fast to confidence. <laughs> Fear not and move out in Him. That was another one. Tell you what, this Word will help you if you'll start letting it take a hold of your heart and let it build in you. It'll take you from one measure to the next. Hallelujah. And it goes on and it says, And we too, children of God, we have access to Him through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. And I, I want to turn over to Romans 8 just real quick. There 
there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And see, if we'll learn to follow in Him and walk in Him and not follow after this old flesh, we won't get under that old spirit of condemnation in our heart. When you start walking under condemnation, you know that you have got to be straying away from the path a little bit. Because as long as you're walking and falling after the Spirit, there's no condemnation there. There's not. It's when that we start yielding over to the flesh, man, is when we start feeling that old spirit of condemnation coming upon us. I'm not talking about the conviction of God. Many have shunned the conviction of God till they've almost seared their own conscience. And the Bible said that man in this last day would sear their own conscience. And it's because the Lord, because God moves in softness. He is still soft voice. He'll speak to you. And he also puts a conviction in your heart. You have that overwhelming feeling. You know, you know something about this just didn't right. That's the Lord telling you. No right from wrong. Don't do that. But you know, people push that back so much so they don't even convict them anymore. And they start saying, well, you know, I, the Lord don't tell me not to do that because I don't feel convicted. Well, no wonder. You've done pushed it aside so much. I'm going to read Ephesians 2 and 18 over. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Ephesians 3 and 12. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. The Lord is wanting us to be confident in Him. Have faith. Go to Him in prayer, believing. Because He said, If I abide in you and you abide in me, ask what you will and it shall be given unto you. And if you are, work, if you are every day striving to enter into the kingdom of God, enter into that place of maturity with Christ, you are daily trying to grow. And, and, and the only way we can do that is by yielding. We've got to learn how to yield to the Spirit. And it goes on, it says in Revelation 3 and 8, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. See, the Lord says, I have put an open door before you. I have not locked it. I have not said you could not come in. He said, I am pleading with men, all men. He said, it is not my will that any should perish, but all men come into the eternal life. Hallelujah. And he said, and that's he, this is what God is wanting. And you know yourself, when you don't lock that door, anybody that comes up to it, they can open it and walk on in. That's what the Lord is saying. I'm asking you, I'm bidding you to come. Will you come unto me? Draw nigh to me, and I'll draw nigh to you. See, the Lord don't force himself on nobody. On nobody. But I tell you what, he'll draw just as nigh to you as you'll draw nigh to him. Oh, he will. I tell you what. My goodness, and he'll start taking you in planes and and, and, and third heavens and things that you ain't never been. I tell you, you, you it, it, will, it won't be unnormal for you to keep company with angels that you'll be able to see. I tell you what, God is good. I tell you what, and the more that you, closer you get to Him, the deeper that faith grows. I mean, it just starts leaping up in your heart. And it says right there, And no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name. The Lord is saying, look, my children, I know that you have grown weak and weary and tired, but don't grow weary and tired and well-doing. Keep marching forward. I'm going to give you that strength to make it. Just rely on me. Look to me. Have faith. Trust me. I'm going to give you the faith to enter on in. Hallelujah. Because I tell you what, the closer you get to him, the more that faith is going to rise in your heart. Oh, I tell you what, God is so good. Oh, he's merciful. He's kind and gentle and loving. Oh, I love him. I love him in all his ways. And he's righteous and just in them all. I want to read one more thing before I close out. And it says right here in that same chapter, Hallelujah. It's for to be carnally minded is death. It's going to bring spiritual death to you every time if you are going to be a carnal Christian. It will end up getting you before it's over. It will steal everything that you have. 
in God. He said, but be spiritually minded is life and peace. I tell you, as long as you'll walk and follow in Him, you'll keep that peace. I don't care how rough the storm gets. And no matter how strong the storms have gotten these last years, I tell you, my peace has always been there because God has kept it there. He has kept it there because He put it there. And I look continually unto Him. He says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. That means it fights God at every turn. It says its way is better. It said it knows better for its own life than what God knows. But God has told us repeatedly, my ways and my thoughts are so much higher than yours. But see, the more spiritually minded we become, the more that we realize that, and we automatically start seeking for His ways and His thoughts. And He starts putting them in us. And only He can do that. Flesh cannot do it. And it goes on and it says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not a subject to the law of God, and neither indeed can be. I'm telling you right there, the flesh neither indeed can come under subjection to God. It takes the Spirit living in us to help us to mortify the deeds of those so flesh and help us to grow and mature in Him. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. He's talking about carnal Christians. Carnality will steal your walk with the Lord. See, any time that you feel your old flesh wanting to let up, bear down with all your might. Hallelujah. Get down on your knees and pray yourself through. We all have to do it from time to time. Hallelujah. Because we ain't perfect. We're all growing. We're all at different stages. But God is trying to perfect His church, mature His church up. Because He's not going to take a half-done church. The church is living in old, any old way it wants to. He said it's going to be without spot, without blemish. It's not even going to have a wrinkle in it, period. And what's going to do that is the Word. The Word. We're washed by the the water of the Word. And that's the reason the more the Word you put active in your life, the more that it cleanses us. It's the reason when it tells you not to lie, lie no more. Especially lying. You know, people take lying so easily. Tell these little old white lies. Oh, it's just a little white lie. Lying is one of the seven sins that God hates. And he said, every lie will be taken the lake of fire. That's every liar. I don't care if it's little, big, whatever. All liars are going to have their place in the lake of fire. And we better cleanse it up. Talking about me and everyone else. Hallelujah. We better watch what we say and what we do. We're going to be judged by every bit that comes out of our mouth that we don't get under the mud. Hallelujah. And it goes on. It says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. The more we draw closer to God, the more spirit, hallelujah, we walk in. It's so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. And right here, it, and I tell you, this right here is, have you ever heard that word? It's, it's all wrapped up in a nutshell. <laughs> it says right here, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. That's the reason this having people repent by the multitude. I'm not saying the ones that are repenting and really are feeling the drawing of God. Yeah, they are getting saved. But there's many out there that is being deceived and thinking they're okay when they're not. When they're not, just because they repeated a prayer. God has got to draw, the Father has got to draw to that heart before it can come to Christ. Got to. There's no other way around it. We are not a Savior. We cannot save people. All we can do is carry the gospel to them, and then it's up to Jesus Christ to save them. To draw them, to nurture them, and to save them. What we do, we carry the word to them. Carry the light to them. This is the gospel light. And what does the light do? It shines forth in darkness and drives it back. And it also makes everything manifested as well. It'll show evil for what evil is. It'll make it manifest itself. And that light 
the floor and sat on it just as clear. You know, you might walk in somewhere and a, and, and a floor might look really clean. Well, it's kind of dusty and there ain't no light on and stuff. But you turn the light on real late and you say, my goodness, I missed that. <laughs> and there you go, you get up and you go, well, it's because light shined on it right quick and showed you. Well, you missed the place. Well, you get up and you go get it. <laughs> well, that's what the Lord's doing by His Word. He's shining the light and saying, look. I'm showing you where you need to grow. I'm showing you what you need to put away from your life. But people are rebellious and stubborn. Oh, the Lord don't mind me to do this well, all alone when His Word seems different. It's just like when Jesus was talking to them saying, I'm the door. <laughs> well, Lord, if you're the Christ, tell us. Well, the whole time He was telling them. But they wouldn't receive it. <laughs> it's like this today. My goodness. Remove that veil from the eyes of the people, Lord, and let them see. Oh, my goodness. I love the Lord. Oh, I appreciate Him for His Word. I tell you what, there's strength in His Word. There is strength in Him. And I tell you what, He'll give us strength every time. Oh, the Lord is good. Oh, I love Him so much. I tell you what, I thank Him for this service today and what He's 